For many applications, an impact driver is just way too big and way too powerful. So the question is, which cordless screwdriver is the best? We'll see which screwdrivers deliver the most breakaway torque. Then we'll see which ones work the fastest. We'll also see which screwdrivers can survive a five minute torture test. At a price of only $13, the least expensive battery powered screwdriver we'll be testing is made by Warrior and sold at Harbor Freight. 4.8 volts, built in light for improved visibility. The Warrior has a magnetic chuck for quick change of bits. Squeeze the top of the button for forward and the bottom for reverse. The cordless screwdriver also comes with four bits. The Warrior is made in China, and a Harbor Freight Warrior weighs 348 grams. On a fully charged battery, the Warrior is at almost 175 RPM. At 24 inches from the sound meter, the Warrior is at 72.7 decibels. At a price of $20, the second least expensive brand we'll be testing is the Bauer brand, and it's sold at Harbor Freight. The Warrior is a 4.8 volt system, and the Bauer is 4 volt. The Bauer has two flashlights, one at the bottom of the screwdriver as well as one at the front. The screwdriver converts from inline to pistol grip, includes four bits, and the directional switch is in a very good location just above the trigger. The Bauer is made in China and is 380 grams for the Bauer. And the Bauer is rated for 180 RPM and it's very close. The Bauer is a little bit louder than the Warrior at 73.9 decibels. At a price of $20 is this high spec brand. And this screwdriver is advertised as a screwdriver set for women. This is a very popular screwdriver with around 2,000 sales a month on Amazon. Toggle the trigger up or down to control the turning direction. Up to 180 RPM. It's a 3.6 volt screwdriver and you use a USB to charge it. The screwdriver comes with quite a few bits. The high spec is made in China, and the high spec is very light at 310 grams. And the high spec makes the most RPM yet at 209, and is by far the loudest yet at 77.5 decibels. At a price of $21 is this high Chica brand. The screwdriver is a 4 volt 2 amp hour system. It can be charged with the USB cable and it has 36 piece accessories. The screwdriver converts from inline to pistol grip. It has a front LED and a rear flashlight. Instead of using a magnetic bit holder, the high Chica uses a quick change chuck. The high Chica is made in China, and it's 381 grams for the High Chica. And the High Chica is very close to 180 RPM. And it's 72.9 decibels for the High Chica. At a price of $25 is this Skill brand. Uses a USB charging cable. It's a four volt system, LED light. The directional lever can be accessed on both sides of the screwdriver. Includes several bits in a bit holder. The Skill is made in China. The Skill may be small, but it's pretty heavy at 372 grams. And the Skill is almost as fast as the high spec at 206 RPM. It's also pretty loud at 76.3 decibels. At a price of $25 is this Craftsman brand. Powered by four volts. One of the features is a rotating bid cartridge. The screwdriver has an LED light. The directional lever on the Craftsman is a little bit stiff and it also sticks out quite a bit more than necessary. The Craftsman is made in China, and the Craftsman is the heaviest yet at 422 grams, and the Craftsman is the slowest yet at 171 RPM, and it's 73.3 decibels for the Craftsman. Also at a price of $25, the same price as the Craftsman is this Black & Decker brand. It claims it can make 35 inch pounds of torque. It's a screwdriver and a flashlight. And the directional switch is definitely not in the best location for one hand operation. It's a 4 volt screwdriver that claims to make 180 RPM. The screwdriver has three different positions, and there's quite a bit of wobble in the handle. The Black & Decker is made in China. The Black & Decker weighs 351 grams. And the Black & Decker is close to 178 RPM. It's by far the quietest yet at only 68.2 decibels. At a price of $27 is this new master. It's a 4 volt screwdriver that claims to make 200 RPM. Includes quite a few bits. It also claims it makes up to 53 inch pounds of torque. Unlike the previous brands, the new master has a clutch. It has a three position handle. The new master is made in China. And it's 389 grams for the new master. And the new master is very close to 200 RPM. The screwdriver is also pretty loud at 76.7. At a price of $36 is this Vastar brand. The manufacturer claims that this screwdriver can deliver 48 inch pounds of torque. It's a 7.2 volt system that makes up to 320 RPM. It even includes a battery charge indicator. You can activate the flashlight by the push of a button. 10 plus one torque settings. Comes with quite a few bits and other accessories. The Vastar is made in China. And the Vastar is by far the heaviest yet at 517 grams. And the Vastar makes by far the most RPM yet at 335. It's also pretty quiet at 68.9. At a price of $40 is this No Cry brand. Up to 230 RPM. It's a 7.2 volt screwdriver that makes up to 53 inch pounds of torque. Includes a 31 screw bit set. Includes a charge indicator. The No Cry has several different torque settings. The No Cry is made in China and is 567 grams for the No Cry. And the No Cry moves into second place behind the Vastar at 240 RPM. And the No Cry is a lot louder than the Vastar at 76.1 decibels. At a price of $49 for just the tool and not the battery and charger is this Milwaukee brand. This is a screwdriver and not an impact driver. Variable speed trigger and up to 500 RPM. Includes a battery level indicator. 
The trigger on the screwdriver activates the LED and the LED will stay illuminated for about 10 seconds. The Milwaukee has a 14 plus one clutch setting to easily adjust from light to heavy use. It also has a variable speed trigger. The Milwaukee is made in China. And the Milwaukee is by far the heaviest yet at 969 grams. And the Milwaukee has a variable speed trigger. It'll spin very slow at 45 RPM and as fast as 496. And it's 74.1 decibels for the Milwaukee. At a price of $50 is this works brand. It's a four volt semi-automatic driver. You can use it in the upright position or like it comes out of the box. And the holder can be removed. It even includes a screw holder. The works is made in China. And the works weighs 527 grams. And the works made it to just about 214 RPM. It also makes the least amount of noise yet at 66.5 decibels. At a price of $75 is this Metabo HPT. It's a 3.6 volt cordless screwdriver that comes with two lithium batteries. The Metabo has a two speed transmission. It's rated for 260 RPM in low range and 780 in high. 21 clutch settings. It also has a switch for the flashlight. And the ergonomics are just not the best with the trigger on the side of the screwdriver. It has two different handle positions. The Metabo HPT is made in China. And it's 474 grams for the Metabo. And it's 224 RPM for the Metabo in first gear and 673 in second gear. And the Metabo is at 71.5 decibels. At a price of $95 is this DeWalt brand. The kit includes two batteries and a charger. Unlike the other screwdrivers, the DeWalt is a gyroscopic screwdriver. It has 15 different clutch settings. Two position handle. Once the drill is activated, the LED light comes on for about 15 seconds. It also has a battery level indicator. The DeWalt is made in China. The DeWalt weighs 506 grams. The DeWalt is about 40 RPM slower than the Milwaukee at 459. And the DeWalt is just as quiet as the works at 66.5 decibels. At a price of $100 is this Ryobi brand. Pivoting head for increased access. The trigger activates the LED light and it stays activated for about three seconds once the trigger is released. Roby claims it can make up to 200 RPM. Made in China. And the Roby is very light at 412 grams. And the Roby is very close to 189 RPM. It's also relatively quiet at 66.7 decibels. At a price of $110 for the screwdriver, the battery, and the charger is this Hercules brand, which is sold at Harbor Freight. Just like the Milwaukee, it's a 12 volt screwdriver. Zero to 400 RPM in low range and up to 1500 RPM in high range. It has 17 different clutch settings. It's advertised as making up to 312 inch pounds of torque. The LED light only stays activated when the tool is in use. The Hercules is made in China. And the Hercules is the heaviest yet at 997 grams. The Hercules is at 386 RPM in first gear and 1,259 RPM in second gear and that's the fastest in the lineup. It's also the loudest drill yet at 78.8 decibels. At a price of $188, the most expensive screwdriver in the lineup is made by Makita. The kit comes with two batteries and a charger. It has a 7.2 volt lithium battery. The Makita has a two position handle, but unfortunately it does not lock in either position. Unfortunately, the handle can become a pinch point for the hand. Unfortunately, the Ford reverse controls are not on the handle, but instead on the body of the screwdriver. The Makita has a 21 position clutch. The Makita is made in China and it's 541 grams for the Makita and it's 176 RPM in first gear and 558 RPM in second gear for the Makita. 69.1 decibels is relatively quiet. If you're looking for a screwdriver that offers the most RPM, the Hercules is the fastest at 1,259 RPM. Metabo is also very fast at 763, Makita 558, and Milwaukee 500. Each of those screwdrivers also has either a variable speed trigger or a two-speed transmission for low RPM control. The works the DeWalt make the least amount of noise at 66.5 decibels. However, the Ryobi, Black & Decker, Vastar, and Makita are also relatively quiet at under 70 decibels. Weight is sometimes an indicator of quality and the high spec is the lightest at only 310 grams. Warrior 348 and Black & Decker 351. If you need a tool for working in tight spaces, the Warrior and the Skill are the shortest in the lineup at 5.5 inches. If you're working with delicate fasteners, you're going to want a screwdriver that has a clutch that disengages at a very low level of torque. Only eight of the screwdrivers have clutches. The torque adapter that I'll be using is designed to pick up very low levels of torque. On the lowest clutch setting, 3 inch pounds for the new master. And the Vastar offers very poor torque control at 10 inch pounds. And the No Cry moves into second place at 4 inch pounds. And the Milwaukee performed the best yet, and the torque is too low for the torque meter to measure. Just like the Milwaukee, 0 inch pounds on the torque meter for the Metabo. And the torque meter is also at zero inch pounds for the DeWalt. And the Hercules does not offer as much low torque control at four inch pounds. 
And the Makita also offers very good low torque control at zero inch pounds on the torque meter. So the Milwaukee Metabo, DeWalt, and Makita offer a very good clutch to help with applications requiring low torque. If you're tightening it faster, you'll want a screwdriver that doesn't give up before the job is finished. So let's test the maximum working torque for each screwdriver. And Harbor Freight Warrior came to a gradual stop at 20 inch pounds. Just like the Warrior, the Harbor Freight Barrett ran out of steam at 20 inch pounds. When it comes to torque, the high spec really struggles at only 13 inch pounds. And 20 inch pounds is the number to beat. And the high chicka just moved into the lead at 23 inch pounds. And the skill is very compact at only 5.5 inches from front to back. And the skill might be small, but it's also the strongest yet at 29 inch pounds. And the Craftsman might not be fast, but it's very persistent. And the Craftsman finally ran out of steam at 24 inch pounds or 5 inch pounds less than the skill. And the Black & Decker has a 4 volt motor just like the skill. And the Black & Decker moves into second place behind the skill at 25 inch pounds. And the New Master has a 4 volt motor. Just like the Black & Decker, the New Master ran out of steam at 25 inch pounds. And the Vastar has a 7.2 volt motor, but the extra voltage wasn't enough at 24 inch pounds. And the NoCry also has a 7.2 volt motor and its gearbox is designed for less RPM and more torque. And the NoCry just moved into the lead at 42 inch pounds or 13 inch pounds more than the skill. And the Milwaukee only has a single speed, but it's also geared to make around 500 no load RPM. And the Milwaukee just took the lead from the NoCry at 61 inch pounds. Let's see if battery size makes a difference and let's replace the two amp hour battery with a four amp hour battery. And the Milwaukee performed a little bit better this time at 64 inch pounds. And the semi-automatic works ran out of steam very early at only 16 inch pounds. And the Metabo ran out of steam quickly in high range at only 8 inch pounds. In low range, the Metabo ran out of steam pretty quickly once again at only 22 inch pounds. And the Dwalt has some pretty neat technology, but it doesn't make too much torque at only 21 inch pounds. And the Roby just took the last place position from the high tech at only 12 inch pounds. And the Hercules makes a lot of RPM in high range, and it also makes good torque at 30 inch pounds. With a 2 amp hour battery, the Hercules in low range just tied to 4 amp hour powered Milwaukee at 64 inch pounds. Under a load, the Makita really slows down quite a bit. And the Makita finally gave up at 32 inch pounds in low gear, which is quite a bit better than average. And the Makita ran out of steam very quickly in high range at only 12 inch pounds. So the 4 amp hour Milwaukee tied the 2 amp hour Hercules at 64 inch pounds. No Cry finished in third at 42 inch pounds and Makita fourth at 32 inch pounds. If you're trying to loosen a fastener that's really tight, it really helps to have a screwdriver that makes enough torque to break loose the fastener. And the Warrior makes 24 inch pounds of breakaway torque. And the Barrow gave up sooner than the Warrior at 20 inch pounds. And the High Spec made it to 35 inch pounds, but it immediately powered down. And the High Chicka performed well at 28 inch pounds. And the Skill is pretty small, but it has the most breakaway torque yet at 37 inch pounds. And the Craftsman also performed well at 31 inch pounds of torque. And the Black & Decker performed about the same as the High Chica at 27 inch pounds. And the New Master gave up early at only 18 inch pounds. And the Vastar hit by far the hardest yet at 60 inch pounds, but it immediately powered down. And the No Cry moves into second place at 50 inch pounds and it continued working after the initial impact. And the Milwaukee is by far the most powerful yet at 105 inch pounds of torque. And the Works has the least amount of breakaway torque yet at only 16 inch pounds. And the Metabo performed well at 31 inch pounds. And the Dwalt performed well above average at 47 inch pounds. And the Roby gave up about as soon as the Works at only 17 inch pounds. In low gear, the Hercules barely edges out the Milwaukee at 109 inch pounds. And the Makita performed well at 46 inch pounds. So when it comes to breakaway torque, the Hercules came out on top at 109 inch pounds. Milwaukee performed well at 105 inch pounds and the Vastar finished in third at 60. Let's go ahead and compare the working efficiency of each screwdriver driving in inch and a quarter drywall screws. And the Warrior makes about 175 no load RPM but it really slows down under load. 4.27 seconds is pretty slow and it lost hold of the bit after the job was finished. And the Warrior is pretty consistent on the next two screws at just over 4 seconds. It averaged 4.27 seconds per screw. And the Barra makes 180 no load RPM and it works a little faster than the Warrior. And it's 4 seconds flat on the first screw. And the Barra improved on speed on the second and third screws at around 3.8 seconds each for an overall average of 3.85 seconds. And the bright pink screwdriver has more enthusiasm than the Barra and the Warrior at 3.2 seconds on the first screw. However, the high spec lost a little speed on the second and third screws at 3.65 seconds each. 
So the high spec moves into the lead with an average speed of 3.5 seconds. And the high chica makes 180 no load RPM and it really slowed down under load. And the high chica drove in the first two screws in 4.17 seconds each and the third screw in 4.06 seconds. So the high chica is a little faster than the warrior but slower than the bower and the high spec. And the skill makes 206 no load RPM and it holds pretty good speed under load. And the skill drove in the first screw in 3.32 seconds and was a little faster on the second screw. And the skill moves into the lead at 3.32 seconds on average. And the Craftsman is a pretty slow mover at only 171 no load RPM. And the Craftsman's performing like it's getting paid by the hour at driving in drywall screws. And the Craftsman's the slowest yet at 4.53 seconds on average per screw. And the Black & Decker is also a pretty slow screwdriver at 178 no load RPM. However, the Black & Decker is faster than the Craftsman, but one of the slowest in the lineup at 4.1 seconds on average. And the New Master makes 200 no load RPM, but it lost a lot of speed under load. And the new master averaged 3.77 seconds on average. It also let go of the driver bit two out of three times. We'll test bit retention later in the video. And the 7.2 volt Vaster makes 335 no load RPM and it also makes plenty of torque for drywall screws. And the Vastar is by far the fastest yet at 1.19 seconds on average. And the 7.2 volt No Cry makes a lot less no load RPM than the Vastar at 240 but it holds very good working speed. And the No Cry moves into second place at 2.43 seconds on average. And the Milwaukee is in a class of its own on this test so far with an average speed of just 1.1 seconds. Very impressive. And the works makes 214 no load RPM, but just like a lot of the other 4 volt screwdrivers, it loses a lot of speed under load. And the works average 3.84 seconds per screw, which is a little bit slower than average. In high gear, the Metabla doesn't make enough power to sink the head of the screw. In low range, the Metabo does a pretty good job of maintaining RPM. And the Metabo is the fastest 4 volt screwdriver yet with an average speed of 2.99 seconds. And the DeWalt makes 459 no load RPM and does a great job of holding RPM under load. And the DeWalt moves into second place at 1.53 seconds on average. And the Roby makes 189 no load RPM and it's really struggling on this test. It's powering down before the head of the screw is fully seated. With an average speed of 3.38 seconds, it's way overpriced at $100. In high gear, the name Hercules seems to fit at only one half second per screw on average. Very impressive. In low gear, the Hercules is almost as fast as the Milwaukee at 1.3 seconds per screw on average. In high gear, the Makita wasn't able to fully seat the drywall screw. In low gear, the Makita has plenty of torque, but it's just not very fast. And the Makita averaged 3.3 seconds per screw. If it's all about speed, the Hercules is by far the fastest at one half second. Milwaukee finished in second at 1.1 seconds and DeWalt 1.53. Let's test the durability and build quality next. We'll see if the screwdrivers can spin over this drill for five minutes. It takes a lot of torque to get the drill spinning. And the Warrior powered through the first part of the test just fine, but it's totally out of gas at just over three minutes. And the Bauer is able to get the drill spinning without a problem, and the Bauer survived the entire five minutes. And the high spec delivers more breakaway torque and working torque than the Warrior and the Bauer. Unfortunately, it does power down if it doesn't get up to speed quickly enough. After a couple of dozen attempts, the high spec got up to speed and survived the entire five minutes. And the high chica had no problem getting up to speed and surviving the entire five minutes. For a compact screwdriver, the skill did a great job of getting up to speed and surviving the entire five minutes. And the Craftsman has just enough torque to get the drill spinning. By the end of the five minutes, the Craftsman is pretty worn out. And the Black & Decker had no problem getting up to speed and surviving the entire five minutes. And the New Master is also able to get up to speed and survive the five minute test. While the Vastar does make quite a bit of breakaway torque, it does power down quickly if it doesn't achieve enough RPM out of the gate. And it took quite a few attempts, but the Vastar is staying powered up and it survived the entire five minutes. And the No Cry made very easy work of spinning over the drill and maintaining speed for five minutes. And the Milwaukee produces a lot more RPM than most of the other screwdrivers and it held very high RPM for the entire five minutes. And the works isn't nearly as fast as some of the other screwdrivers, but it did survive the entire test. And the Metabo also performed well on this test. And the Dewalt was a little tricky to get going, but it held very good speed throughout the entire five minutes.
I made several attempts with the Ryobi, but it powered down for several seconds after each attempt. In low gear, the Hercules maintained very good speed throughout the entire test. And the Makita performed well throughout the entire five minute test. Some of the screwdrivers struggle with holding on to driver bits. So let's compare bit retention next. And the Warrior lost grip at 548 grams. And the Barra performed even better at 608 grams. And the high spec let go a little early at only 483 grams. And the high Chica's locking bit holder held on to the bit at almost 3,000 grams. And the Skill has performed the best of the magnetized bit holder so far at 685 grams. And the Craftsman performed even better at almost 900 grams. And the Black & Decker made it to 981 grams before finally letting go. Unfortunately, the new master really struggled on this test at 309 grams. And the Vastar's locking bit holder offers plenty of strength. And the No Cry is a little weak at only 480 grams. And the Milwaukee's locking bit holder held on just fine. And the Works performed well at 738 grams. And the Matabo and the Dwalt both have locking bit holders and they both held on just fine. And the Ryobi has struggled quite a bit throughout the testing, but it performed well on this test at 886 grams. And the Hercules and Makita both have locking bit holders and they both perform very well. So which screwdriver is best? I think that really depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for a very affordable light duty screwdriver, I really like this skill the best. Not only is it smaller than most of the screwdrivers in its price range, it also outperforms them in most categories. If you're willing to spend a little bit more, I really like the Vastar. It offers quite a few features and it performs extremely well for its price range. If you're already invested in the M12 Milwaukee system, the Milwaukee offers a tremendous value at around $49. I really like the Hercules. It outperformed the Milwaukee in just about every category category and it's a great screwdriver. Hopefully these reviews are helping you find better products and helping manufacturers improve their products as well. All the videos in this channel are viewer suggested so if you have a video idea I hope you'll take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.